before, your offense comes from your defense. We may then see more composure in the offensive end. Now, Pat, you know, as any good journalist, that you always carry your phone with you just in case anyone texts us through information that might be of some substance. You know that. So you were listening to me when I was chatting? I was. Or reading your text message? No, no, no. I, I needed, go for it. needed to know what was going on. 53-33 becomes 53-33 because the big attempt there did not fly in from Brad Davidson. It's out of court. Three and a half to go before halftime. 53-33. It is half-time in the NBL game. The Tigers 58 lead Townsville 47. Well, I've got myself a new phone. That's the good news. The bad news is I have absolutely no idea how to work it. <laughs> no idea at all. Which is a really sad thing, isn't it? So you and Roger are about on par at the moment. Uh, I don't, that's, a, that's a very, very mean thing to do. At least I don't take my muff onto an elephant in India. No, that's a sad thing. Still, phones are easy if you know how to work them. We get a lot of texted messages from people who know what we're doing. And what's happening here is it's a 20-point game. First lead by that margin. And we're three and a half minutes from speaking to Chuck Armisen. There's Luke Chencher, home for the first time in 10 years, and he got tugged. And he will get shots. That's it, you know, he's a kid. And he spent 10 years away from home. He's back. All he wants to do is play basketball. He wants to make a living. Remember... He'd have to be close to seven foot tall. Right? Just how hard is it? And he spoke to us during the week on our local radio station in South Australia this morning saying he's still got the insatiable appetite. He still thinks he's good enough to play with the best in the world. Well, he's starting to prove it tonight. And I understand that he was the, the first and, uh, sorry, the youngest Australian to ever be to ever play for the Australian Boomers when Phil Smythe was coach he called him up into the Australian senior men's team when he was about 15 years of age uh, because he has the height that of course uh, is a prerequisite for success uh, at international level yep he just gets two from two from the strike 53 35 the numbers are the same but they're turned around in a different order 18 points to margin, Red Hage, who hasn't scored in this quarter, hasn't been on all the quarter. Up goes his shot, in it goes. 13 points, we can tell you at half-time. We mentioned Melbourne, 58, lead Townsville, 47. South Dragons, 39, a low-scoring game. Kent's Taipans, 30. Offensively, the Adelaide, 36, is almost a Cooper ball. It's paddled out very cleverly to Darnell Henson. He's a wildcat. How's that for a pass? And a flick out the back, and a crunch. Davidson hits the pine. Crowd saw it happen and called for it. Double teaming is successful. Kendall lost control of the ball. Striding forth is Bruce, who got a tap. And Ben Knight is so frustrated because Perth in control, should have scored. And well played there, Aaron Bruce for the 36ers to drag it back. 20 points the difference, but his effort there deserves plaudits. And Aaron Bruce and Brad Davidson, almost the, uh, the younger and the mentor. Uh, very similar style of player, very aggressive. And uh, Brad Davidson, his body is starting to tell on him a little, just as, in the same way that uh, Brett Mars has. At 34, you've got a young Aaron Bruce who's about 23, 24. Very similar style coming out of the US college system and making his mark here in the NBL. Aaron Bruce gets one from two, 55, 35. Pat, when your body starts to go, can you stop it? Is there any way, like with Brett Maher saying he's just really struggling, this is his last year, you just have to accept it? Um, I think there are some ways that, uh, you know, the, but it, it takes really a, a lot of management of the body. Things that you probably haven't done over the years, yeah. you have to begin to do. And I mean things like daily or several times a week, full body massages, keeping everything in balance. It's all about body management. Bruce has got the body management. Oh, the slip through the fingers of Tyndale for the 36ers, and it just paddles out of court. So with two minutes to go before half-time, it was a 12-point difference at quarter time. It's now 19. At one stage, it looked as if it could be about 30. Perth very handsome with 55 points at quarter time. Oh, sorry, just before half-time. And they lead 55 to 36 as we can go straight across now to the 36ers camp. Scott Ninnis is about to jump in. Here he is, Scott Ninnis.
sure he's got in it, as you'd expect. Remember, we are six games into a long season. Six games in the only side that has been a total disaster have been the Gold Coast, who haven't won a game. But every other side has at least tasted what it's like to be victorious. And remember also, Pat, the New Zealand breakers, they flew out of the blocks, didn't look as if they were going to get beaten at all, and they've stumbled. So yes. it's a typical basketball that, season. That is true. And Melbourne Tigers, who everyone tipped to be the, uh, the, the dominating force in the NBL, is sitting about fourth. Yes, it is. Uh, but it's just, uh, you know, continue to enforce the fact that Winning at home is just so important as there's an offensive foul against Red Hayes who got rid of a pesky mosquito in Brad Davidson. And I reckon he'd annoy you out there, wouldn't he? Brad Davidson would be there. He'd be just, just chatting away, a little bit of a push, a little bit of a shove. <laughs> but if he can irritate and he can distract, he's doing his job. Under two minutes to go before half-time. Davidson's bounce pass to Cooper. Cooper's first thought was to unload, but then decided not to. And there's a little touch. Davidson's happy because just a little bit of holding being done there by Darnell Hinson. And let's have a look. That's five team fouls for this term. So shots for the 36ers getting close to half time. The last couple of minutes have been productive. And a little more stable, although they're not in, yeah, reducing the margin that much. But the lovely part about being courtside is to be able to see the, the little subtleties that happen there. As Brad Davidson uh, drove past Hinson, Hinson fouled him from behind as he tried to swap the ball away. And then uh, the then, uh, foul's called and Davidson just turns back to Hinson and says, soft. <laughs> and smiles. Like, that was and then soft misses call. the two. And then, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, he missed the two from the stripe, which would have been handy. At half time, we're going to take some news and then we'll be back with Chuck Armisen. So don't go away. And all of the scores from what's been happening on a big day of sport around the country. There's some good work there. There's the jump ball. Davidson was in. He flew in. He and Dowdle were at it. And this is the part that I won't say anymore, but it's whose turn is it? First turn. Yeah. After an aggressive attack on the ball by Davidson. Absolutely. Like the dog, they were the last crap for a meal. Yes. And he just flew in. Yes. And the reward is nothing. And the big shot is right on the 24 shot clock and it's tipped in. That's Stephen Way. Now he's calling that as a two. He is. Yes, he did. And a foul as well. And shooting one. So he's got the two and has seven. Spectacular. And so way to the stripe. 57, 36, 21 the difference. Way shot is missing. David Cooper has control in the last 60 seconds. Right on half time we will get assistant coach. No, we won't. Oh yes, we will. We'll get Liam Flynn or Richard Hill, one of the two. And we'll have a quick chat before we go to the news and then Chuck Harmison as David Cooper missed the two. 36ers are missing shots the Perth Wildcats are getting, plus the fact that the Perth Wildcats are a much better equipped unit. On court tonight, they are playing a top brand of basketball as Way's shot, shy of the mark, Shensha hugs the ball and rolls the elbows from side to side. He's not all that muscular, but he's very tall and he's collected 14 first half points. 20 seconds before half time, 57-36. Davidson, Cooper, now it's Tyndall, Tyndall, outside the three-point line, can't nail it, should have nailed it, oh he's got it again, Tyndall falls over, right on the hooter, the shot will come, and the shot will not fall, and it's half time, so half time here at the Dome, and the scoreline is 57 to 36,